And today the PDE team is offering this program through Grad School 101. Today's program and so many other helpful resources can be found in the Grad School 101 portal. All incoming students uh, have been given access to it, and I know that you've received emails about it as well. I just want to make sure that you know that Grad School 101 has like all this information um, that's um, specially tailored to your experience here at uh, Rackham. So please peruse it at um, at your leisure, like, but like there's so many different sections. Please make sure to go through all of them. Give yourself some time to just peek around and see all the ways that the portal can serve you. I'm going to put a direct link in the chat right now so that you don't even have to search for it. Thank you, Danielle. And if you have any questions, please feel to feel free to shoot them our way through our submit a question feature. And now Without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to Rackham. Today's program is all about financial aid and scholarships. We're gonna hear from Leah Hall, a finance and fellowship officer here, about the financial resources that are available to you and how they may impact your financial aid during graduate school. Leah. Hi, Sam. Thank you so much for that introduction. I appreciate it. I will go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today to talk about funding for graduate school education. Okay. As Sam mentioned, my name is Leah Hall, and I'm a senior fellowships administrator here at Rackham Graduate School. So I've been at Rackham for two years, and this is my fifth year at the university working directly with students. Graduate school can be a great opportunity to continue your educational pursuits. Sometimes funding can seem limited, but I hope to provide some information here today to help make you more knowledgeable as you start to pursue your different avenues of funding. The key takeaway today is that there are many tools and resources out there. Advocate for yourself and knock on as many doors as possible so that you can ensure your funding is sufficient and able to support you throughout your degree program. Let's talk about some common types of expenses that you need to think about when coming to graduate school. This can include things like tuition and fees, Leah, books. Sorry yes. to interrupt, we, I cannot see your screen. Oh, you cannot? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, let me stop sharing and then try again. Uh, I could see it just fine. Oh, everyone okay. says they can see it. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, y'all. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Other expenses can be things like living expenses, such as your housing, food, your social and personal activities. And then you may have some additional expenses that might not be standard for every student, such as moving expenses, especially if you are moving to Michigan from out of state. You may have family, family obligations that you're responsible for, or if you are a parent, you may have childcare expenses. Now here to the right of the slide is a screenshot, and this is showing what the University of Michigan has set out as the estimated expenses for graduate students. So as you can see, they use the same number for living expenses, books, transportation, and miscellaneous expenses for all students, but you'll notice that it's different for tuition and fees based on your residency. Now, your actual expenses will obviously depend on your lifestyle and your enrollment level, um, but these are just estimates that can give you an idea of about how much it would cost for one year here at the University of Michigan. Now that we've talked about all the expenses, let's talk about how you're going to pay for it. That is the big question. If you're coming from undergraduate education, there are going to be some big differences between graduate school and undergraduate funding. So a lot of graduate funding is going to be based on external funding. For example, many students receive fellowships from external agencies, whether that is government, state or private business, private industry. 
Um, graduate aid is not as often determined by financial need, like a lot of the undergraduate aid is. Um, the Office of Financial Aid on campus, which is different from our office, they will still use the FAFSA and they still look at financial need for a lot of the aid that they offer through that office. Grad student funding tends to be more complex than undergrad funding, and it really can vary by field of study and within individual graduate programs. And especially since degrees, um, doctoral degrees can take five to seven years. So I would always encourage you to look at the offer letter that was provided to you by your academic program when you were admitted. That is going to be one of your best resources for taking a look to find out what your five to seven year funding model is going to look like. At U of M, some common types of funding for graduate school include work opportunities, and I will go over the three that we have here. Um, these are opportunities for students to be involved in teaching, research, or strategic initiatives here on campus. And typically these ones listed are very competitive employment opportunities that carry a strong financial aid package that may include tuition, stipend, and health benefits. So there are three categories. The first are GSIs, or graduate student instructors. And these positions are teaching undergraduate courses or labs, helping with things like grading and exams. The second type are graduate student research assistants or GSRAs. And these positions are typically working on a research project with an individual faculty member. And a lot of times students will derive their thesis or dissertation from this work. We do see a lot of PhD students with these types of positions, um, sometimes master's students as well, but we tend to see a lot of PhDs as GSRAs. And then the last type is the graduate student staff assistants or GSSAs. And these are assisting with a university, state, government, or federal pr project supported by a grant. And these are more administrative type positions. Now at the bottom of the slide, I've listed two links. The first is careers.umich.edu. And this is a great resource to find, um, you know, graduate student instructor positions. So I would encourage you to check out that if you're interested in, in those types of work. Then there is the student employment website, studentemployment at umich.edu. And this website will have additionally part-time and temporary positions. So if you are interested in utilizing employment as a means to fund your degree, I would encourage you to check out both of those websites. Funding at different stages of graduate education can look different um, depending on your degree type and length. For example, master's programs tend to be one to two years, whereas PhDs are five to seven. So the funding for those programs is going to look very different. Here at U of M, PhD students are guaranteed funding for five years. And that will look different depending on where you're at in your program, whether you're recently admitted, whether you are in your pre-candidate stage, whether you are a candidate, or writing your thesis or working on your dissertation. So your funding is going to be structured in a way that helps you make progress towards your degree. And as I mentioned before, your funding will be broken down in the offer letter that was provided to you by your program. And you'll find that throughout this presentation, we are going to keep pointing you towards your program master's and PhD students have someone in their program with the title called graduate coordinator, and they are going to be your internal resource. They're going to know the most about finding aid that is specific to your academic program. They're going to know about work opportunities within your program, research opportunities. So they are really going to be your best resource on campus. What can funding cover? If you're looking at U of M, here are some of the things that funding can cover. It can cover things like tuition and fees, stipend and salary, 
insurance. So that would be health and dental insurance. Um, we also have vision insurance at the university. However, that um, is typically not covered by the general insurance package. So if you make that election, you just want to make sure that you're making that seven to ten dollar a month um, payment for that premium benefit. Rackham has funding for conference travel. If you are presenting at a conference, we have conference travel grants and many programs will also have travel funding as well. So what we'll see is let's say a student uh, is accepted to present their abstract at a conference and the whole trip will cost around $3,000. They will apply to the Rackham Conference Travel Grant. They will apply to travel funding within their program and maybe funds from one additional external source. Um, and they will kind of pull those together to make sure that they have enough to cover the full trip. We have aid for emergency situations and same with a lot of programs and even some other offices on campus, such as CEW Plus, that is the Center for Education of Women, and they will assist any student here at the university, regardless of your gender, undergraduate and graduate students. We have aid for costs associated with the completion of degree, we have aid for research expenses, and we have funding for professional development as well. Um, and that has been growing here at Rackham recently, especially through our Rackham internship program. So here at the university and Rackham, we have funding available for all of these different things. Where to find funding information. Um, so many students will use online general search engines, but I really want to point you towards this link here. And this is a funding guide that lists both Rackham and non-Rackham funding. It has funding organized by school and college and other external resources and reputable funding search engines. So I'd like to show you this website. Um, it's organized by the library here on campus, and it's a great all-encompassing place. Um, the university can be a big place, so it's kind of nice when things are collated into one um, place for you. So I just wanted to show you um, the section for graduate student funding. So they've listed all of these opportunities for graduate students, and then here's the section for the school specific funding. So you can click on your program and see what funding opportunities are available through that. And then they have um, other external funding opportunities as well and additional resources. So again, this is a great resource that, that you can go to if you are looking for funding. Um, Foundations and organizations may have scholarships and fellowships as well. There are also opportunities in the private sector and government. For example, the National Science Foundation and National Institutes of Health. And you may also find funding opportunities through employers, um, such as internships, or sometimes we'll have employers like Ford who have helped support fellowships for students. Other great resources are going to be your graduate school, the graduate library, your school or college. Um, the Office of Financial Aid is a great resource if you have any questions about loans. And then, um, as mentioned earlier, one of your best resources is going to be your department or your graduate program, um, the faculty, the staff within your program, your graduate coordinator are really going to know a lot of the specific opportunities um, that students have taken advantage of that who have come before you. Um, so they are going to be a really great resource. And I would encourage you to talk to other graduate students as well and see what types of funding that they have pursued and been successful in. And I want to quickly highlight a couple resources on this slide. Um, the Rackham Grad Student Newsletter that comes out weekly. 
Um, and there's a section in there for fellowships with the deadlines and links to apply. So you'll want to keep an eye out for that. And then the Rackham Disbursement Calendar, I'd like to show you that. And this is a great resource if you are on a Rackham Fellowship and want to know when you are going to be paid. Um, so we haven't quite updated it for the 2024-2025 year, but as you can see, this is, this is how it's laid out and it will essentially tell you the payment dates. Let's say you have a Rackham Fellowship for fall. You can see that you're going to get five payments, an early September payment and a September payment, and then it's monthly after that. So Rackham schedule for payments is a little bit different than employment. For example, if you are a GSI or GSRA, or even a lot of departmental fellowships tend to only be monthly. So that they wouldn't have this early September payment. So it's just an important difference to note, like when going from Rackham Fellowship to Department Fellowship or Rackham Fellowship to a GSI position, just to note that there is that difference in the payment schedule. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. If you have questions about um, your employment opportunity, you'll wanna reach out to your program or your department. Um, we're always happy to answer questions about like payment schedules or if you notice something seems off or if, if you need something explained. Okay. If you receive a funding award, you also want to make sure that you are understanding the terms of the award and what it covers. And this is important because sometimes there are terms that you have to follow and conditions that you have to meet in order to maintain eligibility for the funding. With undergraduate aid, this could be things like getting good grades or attending class, things like that. But with the graduate aid fellowships, there tends to be a lot of nuance. Um, for example, if you are awarded a fellowship, it could require you to be registered for a minimum number of credits. Sometimes there are work obligations associated with awards. For instance, there may be a work obligation while you're in school, such as research or working for your program, or the award could even have work obligations after your award is completed. For example, we have an award called the KCP or King Chavez Parks Award. Um, and this fellowship is a great award for master students from Michigan. It is a $20,000 award, but one of the requirements is that the person has to work in a faculty position in Michigan for three to five years after they graduate. And if they don't meet that requirement, then that $20,000 that they received will turn into a loan. So you really wanna make sure that you're reading the terms of the award and understanding exactly uh, what is required of you. Some awards will have annual, annual reports that you have to fill out on activities or expenditures. The NSF is a good example of that. And some of our awards come directly from donors, so we may ask you to write a thank you letter to the donor. And then some awards may also require you to participate in a special program. So it's just important to think about all of these things when you are offered funding. You also want to understand if there are any limitations that the award has. One limitation that we always encourage students to look for is, is there a limitation on additional work? So does the award allow you to hold employment on top of receiving that fellowship? So many of the Rackham fellowships like RMF, predoctoral fellowship, international student fellowship, those will all limit to students to working 10 hours per week or less while they are on that fellowship. So essentially you can't be receiving one of those fellowships and then working full time on top of that. Um, you also want to ask yourself, is supplemental funding available through this award? Does it provide any funding for travel to a conference, research? Um, does it provide health insurance? 
And keep in mind, will you need future funding? For example, let's say you currently have an award and then you receive another award. Can one of those awards be saved for later or deferred so that you can maximize utilization of both of those? Um, you want to ask, can this award be combined with another award? Um, can the fellowship be renewed for additional years or is this just a one-time opportunity? And then the last bullet point, this one's a little more complicated, um, but if the award doesn't provide up to the university's established stipend rate, which is 13,770 per term, is it eligible for Rackham cost sharing? Is it eligible to eligible to be topped up to bring you to that 13,770. So I, I'll give you an example to explain. Let's say you get a fellowship from Dow for fall and winter. And let's say it only provides $9,000 per term or $18,000 total. The university's established stipend rate is 13,770 per term. So the Dow Fellowship is less than that. So you may only get that 18K from Dow, but then we will work with your program and your program will chip in some and the Rackham will chip in some to get you to that full university established stipend level, to get you to that full 13,770. And, we, and we'll also make sure if you are a PhD student, that you are at a full funding package, which is the stipend I mentioned, um, plus healthcare, plus tuition. So that's a full funding package for a PhD student. Um, and if you do receive an external award and are like curious about opportunity for cost sharing, you'll want to reach out to your graduate coordinator. Um, we have a list of awards that are eligible for this type of program. And typically we work directly with your graduate coordinator on the cost sharing. It's always important to think about how additional aid can impact your existing financial aid package. And this includes the child care subsidy, which is a great program through the Office of Financial Aid that provides money for child care. If you are receiving the child care subsidy and then receive additional aid, you want to make sure that you contact the Office of Financial Aid and let them know, hey, I'm getting this additional aid that you guys don't know about. How is that going to impact my financial aid package? If you receive the aid and you don't say anything, and then the Office of Financial Aid just packages your aid accordingly without knowing about anything else that you're getting, that could put you in a situation where they have to reduce a federal loan or they have to reduce your child care subsidy. And sometimes that means that you're going to owe money back on your account that you've received. So just always keep in mind that you should remain in close contact with the Office of Financial Aid if you have federal loans. So for grad students, that's the Federal PLUS loan, the Federal Unsubsidized Loan, or the Child Care Subsidy. And you can contact them through chat, phone, or email. Um, I will say that at this time of year, they are getting a huge volume of emails. So sometimes giving them a call or doing a live chat may get you a response a little bit quicker than if you're just sending an email. And then the last point on this slide, um, if you are hold, holding an employment position, like the grad student instructor positions, the graduate student research assistant positions, um, or let's say you are on fellowship through your department. The, um, if you are noticing that something seems off about your pay, or if you have any questions, you will want to reach out to your program. Um, we do want to make sure that students are getting paid and receiving their funding. So please just don't hesitate to reach out if something on your account seems off to you. We have a fellowships office here at Rackham, and we have a highly experienced team that really has the interest and well-being of each student in mind. 
And the combined expertise of our team includes dozens of years of handling funding resources, and we've provided guidance to hundreds of students. So you are in great hands if you have any questions, um, if you come to our office. Our office administers a lot of the fellowship programs that I will go over in just a minute. And we also manage grant programs like the conference travel grant, emergency grant, and research grant, to name a few. We also serve as the liaison for NSF. So if you hear the term CO, if you are an NSF fellow, we, our office is the coordinating official. So we are the office that answers any policy questions or assists you with setting up tenure. So just let us know if you have any questions throughout that process. We also work with academic programs to set up cost sharing. That's what I was talking about earlier when we work with your program to share the costs to bring you up to a full funding package. We also provide direct funding to departments for graduate students, which they can then use to support students, whether it is providing it to them directly or using it to help support funding opportunities like travel grants or their own emergency funds for students. And some of that money comes from generous Rackham donors, and some of it comes directly from Rackham's budget and then goes to your academic program. We also assist with funding for summer research programs as well. And then finally, and most importantly, I want to highlight that we strongly encourage direct deposit. Um, you can set this up in Wolverine Access, and it's really easy. Um, the reason that we encourage this is because this is going to allow us to get the funding into your hands as quickly as possible. If you don't have direct deposit set up, then the way you get funding will be that a paper check is mailed to the address, the current address that's on file in Wolverine Access. And what happens is a lot of times students are moving. Um, and so a check would get mailed to an old address and then the student is delayed even longer in getting their funding, whereas direct deposit just tends to be a lot quicker. Um, and once you set it up, um, it's, it's all set, it's good to go. You don't have to touch it again. So please go in and set that up if you haven't yet. Now I'll go over some of the funding from Rackham Graduate School specifically. So we have travel, research and emergency funding. Um, we have competitions and scholarships. We talked about those allocations that are going right to your department so that they can distribute more funds to their the students in your program. We have donor specific awards. Sometimes alumni will donate funds that have a specific purpose and we will then work with the department to distribute those funds. And I'd like to show you our funding website. Okay, so this has all of our awards listed, and you will notice um, that there are two types. There are student application and program nominated awards. So awards that say student application, these are ones where you can apply to them directly. So these are things like emergency grants, travel grants, research grants. We also have a professional travel with children grant. So if you are traveling for a conference and you need to travel with your child, you can apply for that directly. Then we have the program nominated awards um, and it will say program nominated. And that means that your program has to nominate you. So you can't apply directly. Um, so some of the larger fellowships, especially the ones that are multi years or a full year fellowship, a lot of those will require your program to nominate you. Um, and if you are interested in any of those awards that are program nominated, please reach out to your graduate coordinator and they will let you know how that process works in your program. Um, so students, some programs are limited to nominating like two or three students 
for a fellowship. So your department might have their own internal processes for how students are selected to be moved forward in one of those competitions. Okay. Okay, our office manages about two dozen different awards and these vary greatly in type, amount, eligibility. We have awards that range from small travel and research grants up to full year fellowships. And the awards fall into four basic categories. Um, we have direct funding, which is designated for specific things like travel, research, or emergency requests. We have competitions for fellowships, the allocations given to your program, and then general funds distributed to graduate level programs for student support. And all of the awards listed on this slide are open to doctoral level students. Um, some of them may require you to be a candidate and that would be listed in the eligibility requirements uh, in the details of the award on our website. For master's students, here are some of the opportunities that we have. Just like PhD students, Rackham master's students can receive our travel grants, emergency funds, and the research grant. There are also things like the Rackham International Research Awards. There is the Rackham Master's Award or the RMA. And this is a recruiting award for entering students only. So you would have been recruited with the Rackham Master's Award if you were chosen for that one when you were admitted. There's also the Shapiro Malik Forest Awards, and the, that one can help with paying interest on student loans. And we don't get a ton of applicants for that award. So if you have loans, please take a look at that award. We would like to award as many students as we can. The King Chavez Parks Initiative, if you are from the state of Michigan, this is a great opportunity so you can take a look at that. That is $20,000 for master's students if you are interested in going to any kind of work in public service. Thank you so much for having me today. And um, I'm happy to answer questions. I know a lot of them came in through the chat. Um, we do just ask that you keep the questions very general. So if you have questions about a specific fellowship that you're on or your sp specific financial situation, please send us an email at rackamff at umich.edu and we're happy to look into just your individual circumstances. We just don't want anybody to have to publicly disclose their financial aid information or anything else about themselves in this type of forum. But please, if you have any general funding questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those for you. Are we just jumping in with questions or should we put them in the chat? Um, you can do both. Before we um, transition to our Q&A, we're going to paste our evaluation link in the chat. Um, please give us feedback. It will help us better improve our programming for you. And I also want to put a plug uh, while y'all gather your thoughts that uh, we have two other Grad School 101 programs this week. Tomorrow, we have a program at noon for um, that we'll be talking about graduate student well-being and all of the resources that you can access here at um, Michigan that can help serve your well-being as a graduate student while you're here. Here's the registration link for that. And we also have <clears throat> an info session on our diversity, equity, and inclusion certificate program which is an opportunity for grad students and post-grad, postdocs, excuse me, to gain valuable knowledge and skills for creating inclusive environments. And that will be August 1st at noon as well. And here is the link for that. And so we have a couple of questions that were pasted in the chat. If you have a question of your own, please raise your hand and we'll get to you um, as we run down the queue. Okay, I'm looking at the chat and um, Sam, if you could let me know if I missed any. The first one I see is 
um, to clarify, is the PhD stipend from the program separate from GSI funding? In other words, would we get a check for GSI in addition to our stipend? So PhD students are um, funded fully funded for five years, and your program may structure that in different ways. So they may um, have you on a fellowship, which would be your PhD stipend for one term, and then maybe the next term you would be a GSI. Um, it is possible to hold a fellowship and then a GSI position. Usually it's limited to something like 10 hours per week. So in that case, you would receive um, your fellowship stipend and then your paycheck uh, for your GSI position. But typically students are, are on one or the other, though it is possible to do both. Um, okay, how can you tell whether an award will buy you out of teaching as a GSI? As of now, half my stipend seems to come through GSI funding and, and half through research. Um, I'm not sure what the first part of the question means to buy you out of, of teaching as a GSI. Um, I can so clarify that, that if that would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. So basically, like if you get like an NSF or something like that, at least in my program, that means that you don't have to uh, teach any longer because the part of your stipend that's supplemented uh, through the university, like by be by teaching is, um, is basically taken care of by the NSF grant. So I'm just curious, like, how can I tell, like, which awards that I'm applying for would do a similar thing and which ones would not? quote unquote, what, what we would say. Like, yeah. fine, yeah, so typically, well, for Rackham, a lot of our awards that provide that full funding package will need to be program nominated, but on our website, it will list if the award comes with a full stipend. So that's that 13,770 per term. Um, so if you are applying for one of those, that would be the equivalent of a 0.5 or like a full-time 20 hour per week GSI position. So that's something that you could look for if you're trying to um, be fully on fellowship and not have to teach. Does that answer the question? I think so. I just know that someone's also paying for, I'm not sure like what part of my uh, financial package like is paying for my tuition versus stipend. So I'm curious, like you're, it seems to me from what you're saying that if I were to see like full tuition or sorry, full stipend offered through one of the um, mm -hmm. awards and that would indicate that that's essentially like replacing what I would make from teaching. Mm -hmm. and, and on our Rackham fellowships, it will say like provides a stipend of 13,770 tuition coverage and health insurance. So it will okay. say exactly what the components are. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Leah, to jump in, most um, fellowships, scholarships, grants that you'll be applying to will also indicate. Sometimes they'll say uh, that they'll work with your department to um, try to get your tuition waived if they don't necessarily provide a tuition coverage, but um, it'll typically be indicated uh, when you apply. Thanks, Sam. Okay, Christina said, you mentioned the university has a minimum funding of approximately 13770 per semester. Where can I find this info on the website, and what should I do if my stipend is below that? Um, so the 13770 that is set out by Academic HR as the established stipend rate for GSIs and GSRAs who are working at a 0.5 appointment level or 20 hours per week. Um, and Brackham is in alignment with that number. So that's why we also have our stipends at 13770 per term. Um, so if you're a PhD student, PhD students are guaranteed that stipend um, for five years. So um, if you're a PhD student, then um, your stipend should be that. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to your graduate coordinator. Um, and then if you are a master's student, if you are a GSI, then if you are working at that 0.5 appointment level, that would also provide you with the 13,770 per semester. 
Um, if your stipend is below that, let's say you're a master's student and you're not employed as a GSI, um, some great resources are the careers.umich.edu website and the studententployment.umich.edu, that website as well, if you want to look for employment opportunities. Um, those are some great places to start. Does Rackham allow for concurrent fellowship along with GSI, GSRA? Um, that will depend on what the fellowship is. Some fellowships are pretty restrictive and only allow you to receive the fellowship. Others will limit you to working um, 10 hours per week or a 0.25 GSI or GSRA appointment. So the answer is it, it depends on which fellowship. And if you have specific, like a specific fellowship that you have questions about, please feel free to email us at rackamff at umich.edu. And I'm happy to answer any specific questions you have. Do graduate stipends increase year to year? Um, academic HR announces those, and typically it's based on the GSI and GSRA rates. So yes, they typically do increase year to year. Can international students? Oh, it looks like Sam already an answered that. Um, to clarify, is PhD stipend different? Oh, I think I answered that. What was the award for master's students with loans called? Oh, I think that might have been the Shapiro Forest Malik Award. Um, you can look at all of the awards on our funding website um, and, and see more details there or email us as well. Uh, when are students working as GSIs added as employees for grad care that require employment? Um, so for GSI questions, I would encourage you to reach out to your hiring department, which it's likely your program. Um, we, we do mostly the, the fellowship side. Our office doesn't do any hiring of, of GSIs, GSRAs. So I would encourage you to check with your program on that. Could you speak more to the Rackham Emergency Funding? What qualifies as an emergency? Yes, so um, there are additional details listed on our funding website, but typically these are like unforeseen circumstances that like couldn't be avoided. For example, things like travel home for a funeral, like a death in the family, um, a dental emergency, like you're in so much pain and you had to get your tooth out immediately. Um, let's say your um, apartment flooded and all of your things got ruined, like that's out of your control. It's just imminent, unforeseen circumstances. Um, and if you have any questions about that, um, we're also happy to answer those via email if you have like a specific question or situation that you're wondering about as well. For PhD, do we change our residency permanent address to in-state? Um, I think this may be related to direct deposit, but um, you would want to contact if you Google like UMICH direct deposit, a website will pop up and there's like contact information on the bottom if that is what this is referring to. Um, but for changing it in Wolverine Access, I'm not sure that's a question you might wanna ask your, your graduate coordinator. When do you typically recommend starting the preparation for the application process each year? Um, it depends on which fellowship you're applying to. So on our funding website, it has all of the fellowships listed with their deadlines as well. So you would want to be planning in advance of those deadlines. And honestly, the earlier, the better, especially for those program nominated awards. The sooner you, you reach out to your program um, and let them know you're interested, the sooner you can start preparing your materials. And we do on-campus job while working as a GSI. Um, that's a question for your department um, or your HR department may know the answer to this. Um, we're more on the fellowship side, so I can't really um, answer to specific questions about GSIs. And then where can we get the Rackham Student Newsletter Weekly? Sam, I believe students are just added. Is that right? 
Okay, they're added to that. So you should keep an eye out for that. If I'm receiving GS or A funding, what will happen if I also work as a GSI? Um, I would. That's definitely a question for your program. Um, again, I can't really speak to specifics about GSI, GS array positions just because we're more um, on the fellowship side. Yeah, I know someone asked if um, international students can apply, I believe, for on-campus employment at the start of the fir at their first semester here. Do you know? I think that? yeah, I think it's really specific on on your situation. Um, mm -hmm. The International Center is a great resource if you wanted to reach out to them, and then if there's a specific pos position that you're applying to, you could reach out to the hiring manager and ask them as well. Um, but everyone's individual circumstances are different. So it, it's hard to give like a blanket answer. I understand. Does anyone else have any questions for Leah before we close off? Well, Leah's um, <clears throat> given us her um, email address at the bottom of this of the page so you can always contact if you have any additional questions lee i want to thank you for being here today thank you for offering your time and your expertise with us and audience thank you for all of your questions if you have any more you can reach out to leah directly or reach out to us here at um rackham pde this recording will be sent to you as soon as it's processed although it takes a little bit and um, I hope you'll have a great day. Continue to take care of yourselves. Thank you so much, Sam.